Learning to Code AI shouldn't be hard, and my next guest has a video series to prove it. Before we welcome him on stage, if you're unfamiliar with the Cozy Eye Kitchen, you're going to want to check this out. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here, in, I'm here in the Cozy AI Kitchen trying to help more people understand AI because it's so confusing. But have you done it for yourself? Um, oh, actually, this is helping me understand AI. Yes, thank you. Because as you know, when you make things, you learn. So I'm learning, definitely. From the Cozy AI Kitchen, it's the actual Dr. John Maida. How you doing, my friend? I am so glad to be here, Seth, in front of a live studio audience. Yes, yes, there's, there's, oh my goodness, oh, wow, they, whoa, they're really whoa. loud. So I love this analogy, okay. kitchen, mm. should we start some cooking? Well, coding is cooking, as we know. It's true. Right, and coding is safe, and mm -hmm. cooking is safe, so if you don't mind donning the AI apron. Right, let's do, I don't know good. why I whispered that. It's very like good. I have a microphone right here. Let me, let me cinch this up. So let's talk about the ingredients and let's talk about what they mean because I feel like there's a lot of information. We were just you and I having a chat before. There's a lot of information out there that maybe is obfuscating what these things actually are. And I love the analogy of we're cooking with large language models. So what do we got and what are we cooking? Let's see. Well, all great material sets start with the materials, oh, right, right. right? Your chicken broth or your flour, right? And so what we're gonna do is use a very desirable material. Okay. This is an AI foundation model. It's heavy. Uh, it's foundational, exactly. <laughs> we, we plan that. But it was still funny. I loved it. It, hey. it actually is true because this is where everything starts, right? It's where everything starts. And you know, a lot of customers ask, well, is this model going to take away my data? But that's a brick. It's been baked over time. That's right. It isn't a sponge. It isn't a sponge, right? Oh, that's a really good analogy because I get this all the time. Like, is my data going into it and training it? Well, no, it's a brick. It's not a sponge. Exactly. So I love that. it. And, you know, it's powered by tokens. And uh, this is my rice dice. My rice May dice. May I? Please, please, go ahead. Yeah. May I? And I like that it's dice because this model is also, and I'm going to use a $5 word, if that's okay, Whoa. stochastic, Whoa. which means that it's probabilistic model, which is cool, right? And so that's why I like the ingredients and the tokens and the dice. You roll the dice, you get your rice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the studio audience is, is, is going to be, well, this is going to be the first time we have, we're going to let them taste it after the show. Oh, that's cool. So, okay. yeah, you have to all it. eat this, uh, yeah. by the way. So yeah. eat the, okay. okay, that's cool. Good. What else, okay. what other ingredients do we have here? Well, first off, Seth, we have to... See, this is the semantic kernel, uh, which you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. this morning. We're going to, like, put some tokens May I? into it, please. Okay, please. okay. So put some tokens into the semantic kernel here. Look at that. Uh, look, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. look at that sound. Look at the sound. Mm, he's it, so uh, good you, at you, this. You hear, I'm really good at cooking. You, well, you're a coder, so it's, you're, it's I've true. Seen you do your prompting. Okay, so prompt engineering in a box, right? I love it. What else we got? Well, as you know, this new kind of semantic code is cool, but there is good old-fashioned code. Oh, that's true. C sharp, Python, you name it. It's, it's, it's about the blend, right? So it's not even just about like putting tokens into the model. It's what are you doing with those tokens on in and out? Combination and of that's, flavors. Okay, so let's get this in here. Let's, Semantic let's, flavor. Let's hear that rich sound here again. Add some C sharp code. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Listen to that rich mm. sound. I, I mean, the smells are wonderful. Well, you know, native code has that kind of vintage smell to no, it. No, I'm talking about my perfume, John. Come oh, oh you do smell good. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, there we go. All right, so, okay, now, so we have semantic code uh -huh. and native code, mm -hmm. okay, and we're using our foundation model, right. the popular GPT-4, of course. recently turbofied. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need another model. What for, though? Well, let's see. You need that good old embedding model. Let's check out the embe oh, you know, embedding model, Oh, my goodness, here's model, the ADA right? embed. We're going to put this, and this is also a foundation model, it feels like. Another foundation model. What's the purpose of this one? Well, we know that if you do not give the model context, it's not grounded. Uh -huh. How do we ground it? We use this model to be able to convert text to long vectors of numbers. Oh, my. Right? Long vectors of numbers. There we go. We're going to take another one. We're now making embeddings. Want to make another embedding? May I? Go. May please, I? Please. Okay. Okay, let's so. Let's ground the model. Mm, mm, mm. So is it the vectors that are grounding the model, or is it the information that the vectors represent? It's the fact that the model can now grab from the, these different vectors and choose the relevant ones, right? Oh, well, that makes a ton of sense. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're putting a bunch in there, but it's doing the selection process because it's doing querying. It's okay. Not a kernel. All okay. Right. Okay. So now that you have the ingredients, uh, is there any more ingredients? Am oh, I missing some? Well, you know, 
The P word? Oh, the word. Pl that's right. Family style plugins. Okay. okay. Let's add a couple plugins in there too, because that okay. extends the capability of the LLM, because LLM can't do a lot besides do language. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. You yeah. add plugins? Yeah. It's got access to APIs, right? And so plugins are a way for the model to call additional things that do additional, well, additional things that do it. Look at me, uh, eloquent, waxing eloquent. Math. <laughs> <laughs> Math. So what other things we got? Okay. Last, lastly, we have something new because of the OpenAI Assistant model, right? We have this thing called Personas. Okay, so tell me about this one. This one I haven't heard about. Tell me about this one. Well, you know, we have these two models. We have the embeddings, and now we have the Assistant model that lets you build basically agents. Oh, so tell me about that. What does that look like? Well, let's actually add a few personas. Okay, into okay, that. yeah. I, I, sorry, I got all excited. I forgot you know, to add it, and you know, he's so inquisitive. I, I'm like the one that misses you know, the. He's I like, didn't. He was put, like the top student. You can tell. I didn't okay. put the sugar in the pie. You know, that, that's right. the kind of guy. Thank you for helping. Okay, okay, so we got them all in the oven. Okay, and let's not forget, when this all happens, it gets non-deterministic. The five dollar. That's word. right. What do you got to do? You got to make sure you got to check the quality with Promptlo. Oh. Yeah, and I, this is something I work on, and maybe, if I may, this, there's like five <laughs> buttons on here. Something bad is going to happen, so I'm just going to put it in here. There we go. Good, good. Very good. Thank so this you. isn't plugged in. This is safe studio. Don't oh, worry. Okay, got don't it. Worry, okay. okay. So tell me about that evaluation to make sure it's working. Well, you know, when it is producing outputs, we want to verify the output is good or not. Right. And so prompt flow is that special part of the meal. We're going to make a lot of turkeys, right, this yeah. holiday? You want to make it 180 inside, right? That's if right. It's 130, look out. Yeah, that's right. And the cool thing is that the thermometer isn't the meal, but it makes sure it's safe. <sighs> oh, man. That was, that was. I just, just made that up right now. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we're going to cook. Let's right. do it. So, what we're going to do Let's is. Let's go to a screen here screen. before. Are we going to a screen? Let's, all right, good. These are the agent descriptions. Basically, they're job descriptions for agents. And what we can do is with a .NET run. Uh, you can actually now assign roles with these job descriptions. Uh -huh. And then what happens is you can actually ask the main project manager over here uh, to solve a problem. So let's. So these, a, are, these YAML files are different agents different that are agent doing different things. With different personas. Yeah, that's cool. And so when we hit return, now we've asked, I want to make a house that is the size of the tallest building. The project manager goes to the researcher who has a Bing plugin and goes to get the size of the, right? And so they all so work cool. together. They're working together. And I love how you've taken a language model and you've made it practical via agent. So we're going to have Evan come on up here because we want to make sure we talk about here, come right, slot right in here. Tell me about the business. He's wearing the tie, so this is the serious guy. Tell us about the business applications of this. Yeah, it's been amazing to see what customers have been building with Semantic Kernel with AI. They start with plugins like we talked about. Mm -hmm. So they're doing things like grounding down their data, calling out to their line of business applications to go get that grounding, get that retrieval. And then from there, they're going even further. They're using things like Azure uh, AI search mm -hmm. to go search for your, your docs, talk to those docs. And they keep moving further and further up the stack. They're doing, they're doing more amazing things as they keep going across multiple industries and multiple use cases. Now, here's the thing, is we only got two minutes left. I feel like everyone's looking at Copilot and thinking it's a chat. And I, my, for me, I'm, I want us to break out of chat jail too. Absolutely. Is there stuff we can do outside of chat as well? There is, and that's what's been amazing. Once people get further past talk to your docs, talk to your data, we're seeing use cases across many industries. Uh, if, if you're in regulated industries, for example, mm -hmm. for things like customer service, we're seeing AI added to things like your standard operating procedures. So when calls are coming in, the customer service agents are literally guided through that process. So the same thing is happening every time, and you can audit that end to end. We're also seeing the same thing across things like uh, customer product um, yeah. goods companies. So within AI supply chains, you can start to do things like take data from IoT sensors, take data from different plugins coming in, monitor what's going on. Amazing. When you're making your product, and when things start to get out of spec, same thing, AI can jump in, talk to the factory managers. It's really incredible. I love all of this. Stuff. Like, and the thing is, I, I wish we had more time. So uh, we'll have to have you come on to the AI show for sure. You get that, get some, get some of that rice in there. So as we finish up, where can people go to find out more? 
Uh, so the best place to go is our Learn site at Microsoft Learn. Uh, they can go to Semantic Kernel. We have a lot of information there to, to get you started, whether you're a C-sharp developer, a Python developer, or even Java developers. I love it. Yeah, get, get, yeah we're, you're going to have to eat all of that. It's, it's, it's real stuff. OK, so this is amazing. John, final words for people that are looking at this. This technology is very approachable. It. Look at them. They're loving it. This technology is very approachable. If you look at it with the right analogy, final words? It's about the lens of learning. When you learn, you're unafraid, and that's the whole point, right? And I think I, I love the, the lens of learning because you can actually approach these models today and start using things like Semantic Kernel, make some agents, and try stuff out, right? Absolutely. Tr cook yourself. Yeah, so I guess it's uh, try something, right? Exactly, do it. I love it. All right, my friends, when your customer's important data is stored on the cloud, security has to be at the top of your list. Our next partner worked with Rubrik to help them keep sensitive financial data safe and easily recoverable. <laughs>